Alrighty guys, we're back for Goblins, and this is a Murders at Karlov Manor standard brew, and I'm Red Cat. Let's go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked rock and some new goblins crime novelist. This is a three mana one three goblin bard. Whenever you sacrifice an artifact, put a plus one plus one counter on crime novelist, and you add one red mana as well. Yeah, seems pretty solid. Now we have to have a build around a little bit so that we have an artifact theme packed in here as well as like a little bit of a treasure theme going on. So yeah, I think it's going to be terrific, all four of them for a good reason. We have another new goblin, a Krenko, Baron of Tin Street. This is a three mana, three, three with haste. Okay, they can tap this, sacrifice an artifact, put a plus one, plus one counter on each goblin you control. Nice. Now whenever an artifact is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, uh, into a graveyard so like that includes your opponent's stuff too you may pay one red mana if you do you create a one one red goblin creature token it gains haste until end of turn so that's going to be excellent paired with that crime novelist might as well finish going over the three mana cards we also have squee in here generating a nice wide board state of goblins gonna be a good one in here kind of feels weird not running two of them actually might be something we talk more about in the final thoughts you never know more goblins! Rundvelt Hordemaster. Of course, it's a 2-mana 1-1. One, one. Other goblins you control get plus 1, plus 1. Yep, that's gonna go a long way. <laughs> when Rundvelt or another goblin you control dies, you exile the top card of your library. If it's a, a goblin creature card, you may cast that card until the end of your next turn. Okay, well that could also come in handy, huh? We'll see how often we actually hit goblin cards with the Runbelt Hordemaster, though. More often than not, you're, like, accidentally hitting mountains and stuff off the top. With only 22 total creatures in here, and the number of goblins is 18. Well, wait a minute. That's four creatures that isn't a goblin. Well, what is it? It's Goldhound. It's one meta, one one, first strike, menace, artifact creature, and then you could tap it, sack it, add one mana of any color. I actually think this is going to be terrific in here, man. Since it sacrifices itself, it works really well with the crime novelist. Any treasure is going to go the extra mile with the crime novelist in general. But like, yeah, just that extra little bit of ramp, maybe getting a turn two really powerful three drop sounds excellent anyways. But then also, it works really well with Enterprising Scallywag too. The two mana two two. At the beginning of your end step, if you descended this turn, you create a treasure token. Okay, <laughs> just ditch a gold hound and that counts as descending and then like you could really go start popping off if you have any amount of setup on the board we do have more goblins here at the front of the build goblin tomb raider a one mana one two as long as you control an artifact goblin tomb raider gets plus one plus out and has haste that's pretty good man that's a solid ability uh and since it's a goblin of course it's gonna go the extra mile we have more ways to generate goblins gleeful demolition as a three of one mana sorcery destroy target artifact it's of course worth noting that that does not say sacrifice right so if you controlled that artifact you create three one one red phyrexian goblin creature token so that's another way potentially to go ahead go wide with your goblins and maybe descend for that extra treasure at the end or sometimes you're going to go for destroy target artifact on a diamond pickaxe we have three of them in here that's a one mana artifact equipment it has indestructible so if you do target this with the Gleeful Demolition, you still get the Goblins, but of course it doesn't destroy the Pickaxe, which is pretty cool. Now the equip cost is 2. Equipped creature gets plus 1 plus 1 and has whenever this creature attacks, you create a treasure token. Yep, all those extra treasures gonna go that extra mile, as I like to say. <laughs> we have more artifacts packed in too, like Experimental Synthesizer, all four of them. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. I had to clear my throat so many times today while going over these builds. <laughs> I apologize. So this is a one mana artifact. And when it ETBs or leaves the battlefield, you exile the top card of your library. Until end of turn, you may play that card. And when we have a build like this where we have so many one mana cards, a really good ability. And just having that one mana artifact that has that ability and then also has this bottom ability too to potentially sacrifice itself and get a samurai as well. I think it is going to uh, really be a great card for this build. And we have some removal with Voltage Surge, a way to sacrifice our artifacts, potentially hit something for four. Sounds great. We have Demand Answers. This is a two mana instant speed. As an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice an artifact or discard a card. Draw two cards. Keeping our hand nice and stocked up. And actually, this kind of looks gross, man. So it has that um, Thrill of Possibility effect, except 
now you can also sacrifice artifacts with it too. And yeah, just like throw a possibility, it is instant speed as well. So if you have that treasure or like a mono red build like this, it's three mana draw to you. That's not bad, right? I don't think it is. <laughs> and then if you're sacrificing that artifact too and like popping off with crime novelist or anything like that, it just sounds really, really good. One more card, guys. Ancestor's Aid. This is a two mana instant speed target creature gets plus two plus oh and gains first strike until end of turn. Pretty good combat trick, but then also create a treasure token. Yep, lots of ways to get treasures, lots of uh, terrific ramp potentially. Oh, I skipped a card here on the top end, Witchstalker Frenzy. Just a way to pick up Shieldred. We are trying to establish a board state of goblins. That means every now and then we're going to run into a brick wall that the opponent sets up on the other side. So a couple Witch Stalker Frenzy is probably going to go a long way. And in this build in particular, I do think it's going to be pretty easy to get this down to just one mana. 19 total land, 18 of them being mountains, one of them being a Crucible of Defiance, and a whole bunch of honorable mentions. I thought about Goblin Blast Runner for this one. Well, Darren Epicure didn't make the cut this time. Uh, Codebreaker, that's another new goblin that was actually really good in the last mono red list that I played, but... I don't know about for this particular goblin goblin build, maybe a different goblin build at some point too, or just other builds in general. I do think Codebreaker is pretty good. <laughs> I thought about Smelter too. That fits the artifact theme and the goblin theme. Could be a great budget uh, replacement for some of these cards too. thought about Breaches as well. Yeah, that's a goblin. Also, another new one, Torch the Witness, could be a great way to actually remove a creature and get an artifact on the board, which of course, those artifacts could really go the extra mile. All right, guys, let's go ahead, take this into some ranked and see how we do. Okay, we'll see if we can get right into that first game. Uh, looks like we do. Nice. There's a ton of people playing Magic today. It is the first day of the new set release in a good time so far some people are bringing new cards to the table which is nice sometimes it takes a little bit sometimes it takes like a week for people to start bringing new cards to the table hmm okay uh we keep this i don't know how i feel about the triple mana so hopefully we don't see land for a few turns in a row and hopefully we have a way to get an artifact down sooner than later yeah guys what am i expecting from the build I don't know what to expect. I actually think it's going to be a, a pretty difficult deck. And I didn't do any practice games either, so hopefully it's not too difficult overall. Grelve, huh? Well, I say we swing and see what happens. Well, I mean, obviously it gets through because Skrelv can't block. <laughs> That's funny. Let's get Enterprising Scallywag down then. Skrelv wouldn't be terrible to take out with the Voltage Surge, but just like setting up our creatures seems a little bit better for now. When you see Skrelv on turn one, like there's so many possibilities for the different deck lists that it could be in, but like one of the things that crossed my mind is like Brutal Cathar st uh, style deck lists, right? Just like mono white aggro in general. But like Voltage Surge is really good against those lists. Lay down arms. Oh no. Brawling Chorus. Oh no. <laughs> Oh dear, more mana, Ew. Okay, well, uh, let's not forget Gleeful Demolition hits the opponent's stuff too. Like, we're, it's not just here for goblins, it also hits artifacts, so that, that could take out the Skrelv quite effectively too. Is Sorcery Speed, maybe that's what we do actually. Like, I was thinking, oh, we better go wide with goblins, but, well, there might be a better artifact to hit too. I should save the Gleeful Demolition, right? Keep the Volted Surge open. A little bit of an awkward keep on my part. Maybe I should have mulliganed. Maybe. So much to draw into that could uh, make this a lot better for us, though. Okay, let's see what they end up doing here. Grelv, they're going to keep a blocker. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit the Grelv. Commit zero. No extra protection from the opponent there. It's going to be welcome. Oh. Okay, that could keep their hand nice and stocked up. Like, we could Voltage Surge this. I, I feel like I should have a little bit of patience. 
Okay, demand answers. So we could totally discard on our turn because it technically could affect combat. Crucible probably, right? Probably. I like the utility land and all, but oh yeah, I feel like we could see more mana. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's not great. Okay, well, let's swing. They do go for the chump this time round. They get a little 1-1 one, one back. Oh, they get a draw too because of the welcome. Ooh, that's that's not great, is it? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, very very awkward starting hand. Maybe this really, really was a mulligan. I guess we should probably Vulture Surge this 1-1 one, one, since it... Oh! See, Squelf can get picked up by the Gleeful Demolition. I still think there's going to be a better artifact to pick up. Mm, and, like, I still think maybe... Okay, yeah, we're going to hit that Squelf with the Voltage sur Surge instead of the Gleeful Demolition for it. And technically, Gleeful Demolition hits the Might, too, but submit zero. Yeah, something that's not land off the top. <laughs> Gleeful Demolition. I mean, you know, it's not land, so... Um, at that point, now that we got two of them, I suppose... Oh, they're going to be generating Mites every turn. <laughs> this is Sorcery Speed, too, so... Man, that's... That's clunky. And they're going to draw extra on the welcome. The opponent had so much time to get a beautiful setup over there. Another demand answers could be good. Like for this first game, just like we needed a lot more artifacts. Can't swing. Ooh. Well, I mean, same, same concept. I got really excited to see the new goblin, but same concept. We need a lot more. A lot more artifacts so far. We'll see if game two is the same thing. Like, I, I'm not ready to say, oh, we got to... We got to pack in at least four to five more artifacts, right? But we'll see if, like, potentially we're getting a little unlucky first. The draws on the demand answers was really, really bad. And for 19 total land, seeing five isn't necessarily a fly... Well, six, because of the Crucible, too. Hmm... One good thing with the Crime Novelist is actually it blocks these 1-1s one -ones really well, too, while we're doing our dandiest to get set up here. Oh, they found some removal. So I suppose Crime Novelist won't be making it. I'm going to save this Gleeful Demolition. Like, yeah, we could totally hit their 1-1, one -one, but... It's going to be Charge of Mites. Okay, that didn't... Charge of Mites doesn't hit anything on our side yet anyways. Now it can. Now that they have four creatures, which I suppose it could be like charge of mites, take out novelist, swing for three. Jawbone duelist, dude, we're in trouble. Holy cow. That's not an artifact creature either. Lay down arms. Who needs the second charge? Jawbone du Holy cow. Dude, the opponent is stacked. Oh man, demand answers. Let's see what we find. It's it's over though, huh? Wow, more mana and an ancestor's laid uh, or ancestor's aid. <laughs> oh man, what a time! Let's let's get that swing. They could easily easily take this. And now that we have an artifact on the board, it actually gets that plus one in haste. That's pretty cool, at least. Dude, let's. Let them get this swing in. Good game, opponent. That deck actually looks really wild. Toxic really doing a thing. The welcome was huge for them, keeping their hand nice and stocked up uh, without any worries, actually. And an ossification, too. Oh, man. Just three pieces of removal felt like so much removal, too. 13 total poison at the end there. Oh, buddy. Well... Yeah, it's not what goblins wanted to do. Let's, let's go right into game two and see if we're able to pull something off. Now, if I see another hand like that, I'm definitely going to try to be vigilant about the fact of no artifacts, right? Like that, that was particularly bad. When pretty much everything wanted artifacts on the board. 
Yeah, yeah, hopefully we have enough. What'd you bring into the table, opponent? Hey, an artifact. All right, that's not necessarily something we want to do on turn one, though. But we can get it down. Um, we're on the draw. We might see something else to do on turn one. We have so many one drops here, guys. Uh, turn two, like synthesizer, isn't necessarily something we want to do when we have the scallywag to set up with either. It's an awkward hand, but I don't think it was a mulligan. But that's what I thought about the last one, too, so. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to try to be patient about my synthesizer. I'm going to do my dandiest to be patient about it. Like, we don't always have to use all our mana, right? Iron Craig, okay. Diamond Pickaxe, sweet. Oh, turn to Synthesizer, see what we see. Oh, never mind. I'm going to get Scallywag down. I'm going to wait and then not play my mana next turn, because we could see a mana off a of Synthesizer. And then see what we see, and then... Anything other than our top end would be great off of that synthesizer. Yeah. A little bit of patience with it. I think it, that's going to go a long way. Avern of Souls Dinosaur, huh? All right. Well, a little bit more patience in pretty much all of our top end. Okay, next turn. Yeah, I keep talking myself into waiting, which is pretty funny. We could also go diamond pickaxe to equip it, see if we can actually get through. But I don't think so. I think it's... Well, let's try to swing first. I, I think Scallywag's going to die to some burn here. Like a trumpeting connoisseur. Right, Iron Craig chilling here. They got the Cavern of Souls called that dino. Like This is a trumpeting connoisseur style deck if I've ever seen one. But I'm pretty sure Scallywag bites the dust. We play the second one, we set up with the Diamond Pickaxe. Then next turn, we go Synthesizer and pretty much able to play whatever it is that we see, except for Witchstalker Frenzy. So get a little value that way then. Oh, it doesn't look like they're going to pick this up. All right, Scallywag number two. Yeah, they have four open mana, so maybe it's going to be... Maybe it's going to be a draw spell generate some treasures for themselves. Set up with the pickaxe. Because I don't know how important it would be to actually keep the Vaulted Surge open against this build. It is going to be a Trumpeting Connoisseur. Though we do have the Descend on the Scallywag, which is really good. Not bad. So we ended up getting the swing through. So we got them down to 18. And we traded out the other Scallywag for a treasure. This is the type of game where we really want to see that Gleeful Demolition, right? Or pretty much anything, but we'll see what we see. Ooh, mountains. Okay, let's see what we see on the Synthesizer. Hopefully it's not Witchstalker Frenzy, because we have no targets. Ooh, Goblin Tomb Raider. Very nice. So get that mountain down. Goblin Tomb Raider. One, two, Horde Master, swing for six. I can only imagine something else is going to get picked up here. You try to... No, yeah, it's it's, it's Horde Master. Because that's pretty good, man. This is goblins doing the goblin thing. And hopefully we don't see more mana. Voltage Surge is open. Because of our treasure. Looks like this is going to land. It lands, guys. No removal for the Horde Master. That's pretty good. You know what's not good, though? A board wipe. Opponent, don't do it. Don't do it, opponent. It's not worth it. It's not worth it, buddy. Oh, no. Oh, no. I I feel uh, like this is a burn down the house style deck. A Brotherhood's End. Like, all of it. Chandra. Okay. So, minus... Minus two would take out two of these if they go Horde Master and another one. Yeah, minus two is enough, so... They go minus three on these. We get to keep the Horde Master. Cool. See if we see some uh, goblins off of Horde Master. Everyone we 
And minus three means our voltage surge hits. Oh, two mountains. <laughs> wow, dude. Okay, we should probably drop the voltage surge. Uh, auto pay. Submit zero. Because I don't think... Well, we could have diamond pick, right? Man, this is a lot of mana. What on earth? Yeah, we could have went diamond pick, swung at Chandra, kept the voltage surge in hand. That's that's a line, guys. Something I could have thought about. So we see on the synthesizer. Might even be more mana. It is not, but it is something we can play, so that's good. Yeah, no, I guess we, we should definitely play it. We can't hold it. Because it'll just uh, it'll just go away anyway. So hopefully, yeah, that Brotherhood Zen doesn't come down. And if it does, I suppose the Horde Masters get to exile some goblins for us off the top. Company Connoisseur, let's see what we, let's see what they see. Brotherhood's End. No, guys, <laughs> that's brutal, man. Oh, dude. Well, four times over on the Horde Masters. Prime Novelist. There we go. Mountain. There we go. Dude, holy cow. Wow. Okay, well, what the heck do I play? I guess our three mana cards. Squee. Um, dude, we, we saw all the goblins there. That was sick. We can only play them until the end of this turn. Like, Horde Master number two. No way to sacrifice an artifact on the board. If we go one, two, we... My apologies, opponent. I'm thinking, buddy. Like, we could get our, both of our three drops down. But then if it's going to be like another board wipe, we won't have that Horde Master ability to pull us out of this. But I guess, unfortunately, Crime Novelist is not going to be played here. I was trying to think if there was a way to equip that pickaxe, generate a treasure to actually get everything down, but we'd still only have two open after the swing anyways, um, which I suppose we could still do. It would be the it would be a similar concept though, as just playing the horde because it would still be a three three regardless. This way we have when it dies. Horde Master's ability to potentially see another goblin off the top. So let's see if we see it. Squee can, of course, come back next turn. And it was going to be another mountain off the top. Holy cow, guys. That's like all of our mana. <laughs> um, so we have Crucible. We have six on the board. Four over here. That's 11 mountains. 11 out of our 19 land, guys. That's pretty wild. Goldhound, hey. They keep the blocker back. I think I understand. So bring Squee. Crucible can't come down yet. So Squee, right? We have two open. So I guess we'll just go pretty much anything here. I don't think I don't think it affects anything. One, two, three, four. Unless they have Something that makes us, or that cares about our mana values in the grave, right? Oop, a block there. They have instant speed spot removal. I suppose we go on to the Horde Master here. Right? Get the treasure, play Gold Hound. Unless we want to play around a board wipe. We're still doing a lot, man. That's six to the opponent's face, potentially bringing Squee back again next turn. Let's see if we hit a goblin. We do not. Gleeful Demolition, darn. Gonna keep Crucible back? Play around the board wiper? No. Yeah, we should. We should keep Gold Hound in hand. There's no great way to give it haste, though, huh? I'm just gonna get it down. Uh, mainly because if they go board wipe, we still have Crucible. We still have potentially bringing Squee back from the grave too. Like the board wipe could very well be likely here. 
but I don't know if there's a real good reason to keep Gold Hound in hand. Now, if it had haste, yeah, I think, I think we would. Or if there's a great way to give it haste. Or, now, hold on. Oh, it looks like it's not going to be. What did we hit? Demand answers. Oh, that could have been pretty good. Ooh, Tomb Raider. Oh, buddy. All right. Tomb Raider comes down. Uh, Goldhound has Menace, too. Squee comes back. One, two, three, four. Full swing. GG opponent. Holy cow, guys. The goblin pressure, huh? That was sick stuff. Holy cow. I wonder what else was in their hand at that point. Like, they were definitely missing some of their board wipes, right? Like, how much does a deck like this usually run? Two to three Brotherhood's Ends, right? All four burned on the house, probably. They had to keep saving the blocker back. I wonder if they decided to not save the blocker. No, that would have just ended the game sooner. They wouldn't have had the great blocks into the squee. Squee just showcasing its power in that mid-game. Holy cow. That was a good one, man. I do feel like we got a little lucky that we didn't get it with a second board wipe, though. And Runfelt did a thing. Just like everything. Everything did the thing. Now, we did flood a little bit, too, so that's noteworthy as well. So while the opponent missed out on some of their board wipes, we were also getting a lot of land. Oh, no. Oh, no, speaking of a lot of land. Dude, I want to keep this. I want to see what happens. Gold Hound, right? Just, just in case. <laughs> just in case. It's also a pretty good swing. Uh, early on, too. Like, the Menace gets by things that they play. Yep. Take it. Alright, mana. Alright, so... Actually, Synthesizer. Being patient with the Synthesizer was pretty good, but finding more mana here, yep, that's pretty good, too. Alright. Now we could go Voltage Search, hit the Swiss Spear while it's down. But I think it would just be better to try to outpace Mono Red. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do our dandiest to outpace since we went first, right? Wordmaster's great. There's a great hit on Synthesizer. See, we could have, it could have been really bad. We potentially could have seen uh, one of our three mana cards and not been able to play anything. Phoenix Chick, swing for three, down to 15. Scallywag. We go Scallywag. We have the swing for three as well. So Crucible's probably going to come down as a land, right? So let's do that. Rundvelt to buff the board state. We still have two. We just buff the uh, Goblin Tomb Raider here. We could go Scallywag and we'll have the descend for the treasure. Or we just Voltage Search Swiss Spear on our turn. Swing for four. I think that's pretty good. We want to do it on our turn, so that way they don't get it above the uh, Surge with the Prowess. Commit zero. That could be a great way to see more off the Synthesizer, too, when it comes time. But just, like, making sure they can't outpace us with the Swiss Spear is probably really important. Nice. Great cards, but they can't block, so of course they're swinging in. Down to 11. Anyone's game, dude. Anyone's game. I know it. Prime Novelist. Alleywag. Okay. Do I start with the swing? Swing for four. Um. Witch Stalker Frenzy down to two. Okay, so we swing with our goblins, right? Now how we want to do this is get... We don't want to do too much damage to Feldon. The so Crime Novelist. Then we do Gold Hound, right? For a red mana. We get an extra red mana. And we go Enterprising Scallywag. And then we generate that treasure token at the end. 
That's pretty sick, dude. Those are pretty good stats. That's a 3-5. That could be really hard for Mono Red to remove. Kamano, yep. He still got that swing in the air and a pretty good swing on the ground still with Feldon. But if we're able to take it this turn... Ooh, okay. Okay, two in the air. Um, they just swing in the air? Do we have a good block, but they get to see three? That could be really bad. I think we do block, so... I agree with the opponent's swing, I would say. Except Feldon being unable to block is pretty rough. So we do have lethal. They do not play a land. That that should be it. So we full swing. Bring the Witch Stalker Frenzy down to one. Get rid of their one blocker. That's good, man. That's really good. GG opponent. Oh, man. A good thing we went first, though. For real. Yeah, it's really good that we went first because uh, outpacing generic mono red is tough. Tough to say the least. Like, uh, it goes fast all the time. Very consistent. That was good. Goblins. Goblins doing the goblin thing. Man, I'm really satisfied with these matches so far. Except the awkward first match. <laughs> That's funny. Although we we gotta we gotta keep it all in. We gotta see what to expect from the build. And every now and then, yeah, you're just not gonna see your artifacts or get really awkward draws. If the deck is capable of it, then we gotta showcase it. Good hand. Yeah. I think so. I'm trying to think like, what do we want to do with this gleeful demolition? It's probably gonna be the treasure off the ancestor's aid. But you never know, we might target the Gold Hound. It depends what we end up drawing. But buffing the Demolition Goblins with the Horde Master is terrific, obviously. Ooh, great draw. Probably right into that. I guess start with the swing. Uh, pickaxe. Gleeful Demolition. On the pickaxe. Great draw, dude. Um, now we have Prime Novelist for next turn, but it's probably just going to be much better to buff the board. Swing on in. Okay, Boros Colors over there. This could be Boros Control rocking uh, Brotherhood's End. They might be choosing Patience. <laughs> um, right, so Gleeful Demolition number two is pretty good. So first of all, Probably just, probably Horde Master buff this board state. We do have Ancestor's Aid. If we don't want to swing with the Gold Hound, that's one extra damage and a treasure. Treasure that we can use with the Crime Novelist when it comes time. Is that something we want to do? Probably not. I think we just choose Patience. It's just one extra damage. Just like holding back for now, we might have a better... Same thing with the Gleeful Demolition, man. If a board wipe's coming, we're going to need to be able to restock the board. Hopefully effectively. Union of the Third Path going back up to 18. Guys, I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> Union of the Third Path, they missed their fourth mana, I bet. And they're looking for it. Oh, they may have found it. Yeah, back up to 25, no worries. Had we went more wide last turn, maybe it wouldn't have been the second third. I think playing around the board wipe was still the correct decision. And we might do that again this this time around as well. Uh, let's go diamond pick onto the Runvelt Horde Master. Wing, and now I guess we could go Ancestor's Aid. Sure. I, I guess. It's extra damage. We have the open mana right now. Down to 14. Man, they gained a lot, huh? They're going to keep the Gleeful Demolition back, especially now that they have four, too. This is definitely a Sunfall-style build. Depopulate. Let's see what we see on the Horde Master. Come on, goblins. Man, that's so good. Ooh, Tomb Raider. Yep, that's some haste. Ooh, Horde Master. All right, sweet. Dude, good hits. 
For real. Okay, Horde Master. Now, when do we decide to go for the Gleeful Demolition? I was trying to think there if there was a better way to actually play those out, like Crime Novelist, and then use our treasures to ramp, right? But I wanted to keep a lot of my stuff in hand anyways. We get the treasure back. Yeah, there was probably a way to actually just get everything onto the board using the Crime Novelist and our uh, two treasures. But yeah, just keeping stuff back because of a potential second board wipe. Probably best. So we have a five swing. They have four open, so Wandering Emperor is something we want to think about here. Synthesizer's a good draw. We can pretty much play anything except for like Witch Stalker Frenzy, which doesn't have a target until like an Emperor does hit this board. If it is going to be an Emperor, oh, Gleeful Demolition. We could hit Synthesizer, try to see more. I'm okay with that. How do you guys feel about that? Because we still have four open mana. That's really good, man. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I'm going to play it and we're going to full swing. And if it's a Wandering Emperor, I mean, that's still really good for them, huh? But, man, this is good. Holy cow. Let's see what they do. Some simple spot removal for the Horde Master. Gets rid of three of the damage. And it hasn't played too much overall. They gained a ton with the Union. It's going to be big score. Maybe they'll find some removal for the Horde Master. Down to three. We keep everything else in hand, anticipating another board wipe. But I'll tell you what, if it's not a Sunfall, if it's like another Depopulate, these Horde Masters are going to pop off, dude. We're going to see so many cards off the top. If they wipe this board. <laughs> and then hopefully it's just a bunch of goblins that maybe get haste and stuff. Ooh. Minus four. We get to keep one of the one ones. Make room. Which, uh, I mean, I mean, we'll see. We'll see, man. Maybe we end up decking ourselves out with Horde Master this game. <laughs> Crime novelist. Okay. Come on, hasty goblins. Anything that buffs the goblin. Crime novelist. Come on. Come on. Oh, hasty goblin. Let's go. Wait, we don't have lethal. Yes, we do have lethal. But they still have two open treasures. Crap, guys. Crap. Um. Oh. Dude, what a good draw. Okay, so if we start with crime novelist... How do we want to do this? Like, we have to play around one piece of spot removal. So it comes down to how do we actually get the spot removal to not affect the three damage? Do you guys know what I mean? So, okay. So treasure, right? And we get two extra. And then we go Krenko. Making sure I'm doing that right. Franco comes down with haste, and then we go treasure, <laughs> and then I guess we go wide by paying the one with Krenko, and this buffs the other one one. We pay the one, it doesn't tap that down, but then we do the same thing, right? So this should be enough unless they somehow gain a bunch here. It should just it should just be enough because we also have the hasty uh, tomb raider. Yep, GG opponent. Oh man, I wanted to make sure I actually played that out properly, and hopefully I did. I think so. I I think that was like the most optimized line. But seeing like the crime novelist and everything, dude. The honestly, the horde master could have hit a lot more. We we missed a lot with that horde master ability. But yeah, Crime Novelist really showing off there, really showing off like once you get those treasures rolling, 
how much you can just absolutely pop off. And since we weren't using that tap ability on the Krenko, that was going to swing in too. Um, so one piece of spot removal, take out the Krenko, and we still had a whole bunch of goblins swinging in. At that point, though, too, if we wanted to make sure we were going wide with the damage and we didn't want them to just uh, take out the Krenko uh, from the swing or something, right? then we could have used this ability, sacrificed an artifact like the Diamond Pickaxe, and then buffed our wide board state with a bunch of counters too. Just uh, more damage going wide. So actually a lot of options there for us to win. That was pretty sick, dude. Holy cow. All right, 40 minutes in. Let's go ahead and go over the deck list again. Uh, this is the third video I'm recording on day one of the new set. Pretty, pretty fun stuff, man. I had a good time today. I like the new cards. The new goblins seem really good, actually. Is this is this a route? Is this a path we could take? Maybe. Uh, playing around with some of the numbers, maybe we can make it a little bit more consistent. Based on what we saw today, I would drop like one Witchstalker Frenzy. And like that's... I should be really hesitant to say that because I think a lot of the times you're just going to be running into the brick walls like Sheoldred. I'm actually shocked. Did we see Shieldred today? Uh, against our goblins? I don't think so. Well, how many matches did we even end up playing? I'm not sure. They were really good games, though. I think the four crime novelist is totally worth it. Two Krinkos? Yep. The Squeed? Definitely worth it. Do we want two of these? Yeah, probably. I mean, that's probably one of the things. Depending on what you're seeing, what you're going up against, I could see dropping down the Witchstalker Frenzy going up that second Squee. But yeah, if you are running into way too much shielder, th then the double Witchstalker Frenzy is going to be great. Especially when, yeah, we go wide enough, you're going to get this super cheap all the time in a build like this. Triple Gleeful Demolitions, totally fine. I wouldn't go up to four. I don't think I'd drop down to two. I think this was pretty important to keep up a nice wide board state. Buffing that wide board state with Horde Master. Yep, all four made sense. Three Scallywags. Yep, I like that at three. Three diamond pickaxe, sounds good. Yeah, like I said, like we could play around with the numbers a little bit, but the numbers actually felt pretty good. And like the more we played, the more that first game just felt like really bad luck. You know what I mean? So I like this one. Guys, if you made it this far into the video for real, y'all are champions. Make sure you check out that description where we got that Discord link as well as that Patreon link if you're interested in supporting the channel that way. Definitely let me know in the comments, what would you add or take out? What's your goblin list going to look like, huh? Oh, demand answers. How was this? It's not, it wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be, but it very well might have just been those games today too, right? So I do like the one of Ancestor's Aid. Every now and then it's going to help you get a combat trick off on like the Shieldreds that I talked about or something. But then also just like push that extra damage through the extra treasure off of this was great. I wouldn't drop this one of it all. Okay, now I think that's everything I wanted to say. Oh, 19 land? Yeah, the 19 was fine. Maybe we could drop. No, I think I think the 19 land was fine. <laughs> okay, guys. Hey, I will see you in the next video.